Welcome back, everybody. This is the latest episode of Real Estate Uncensored, the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And we have a killer guest for you today who has developed a really interesting niche specialty. Not only has she done it for herself, but she also helps other people do the same thing. So we've got a bunch of fun stuff to talk about. I love this conversation. Uh, it really is a great perfect example of, of niching down or Greg is our friend Christopher Lockheads would say niching down niching <laughs> down you gotta gotta watch out gotta gotta make it uh, gotta customize it for the Canadian audience um, but anyway we've got a bunch of fun stuff to get into we'll bring Kim in in a second but first the junior grandmaster in the co-pilot seat Greg McDaniel what's up today Matt Johnson face uh, Johnson I don't really know where I was gonna go with that but dude another amazing day Kim is a uh, to say that she has many talents is undermining her, uh, to say the least. Uh, this woman has uh, just incredible, just, I, I'm, I'm just going to screw it up if I say it. So I'm just going to not say anything. And I'm just going to say welcome <laughs> to the show because I'm going to forget some vast part of your, of your past that is going to be paramount to everyone's success. So welcome on. I cannot wait to get this conversation started. Thank you. <laughs> so Kim, catch us up a little. Uh, for those that might not know you, um, I, I can share with the audience. We like we just had Zach Hammer on uh, again over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the audience is probably familiar with him, and Zach is the one that connected us because he he ran across you and was so blown away by your specialty. So I want to tell I want to talk about that first. Then we'll kind of dive into the background. Just tell people like the sixty second version, who you are, where you are, what you do now, and then we'll kind of talk about how you got to where you're at now. Absolutely. I have a coaching system called Downsizing Specialists in Real Estate. Mm -hmm. And I have been a downsizing specialist for nearly a dozen years. Uh, I've been a real estate agent for over that. And I'm really passionate about helping people, the mature market usually is what it is, not yeah. always, who are downsizing into smaller homes, senior communities, helping make that smoother process and getting that home listed and sold for them faster, easier, and with less stress. And, and what was it that kind of attracted you to that market to begin with? Did you have a personal experience with your own parents or in-laws or anything like that? I had a professional experience first and then a personal experience. So I got, oh. I'll try to tell the 30 second version. Hmm. Uh, I was a rookie realtor in the Midwest and I was representing an upscale new condo development that was very appealing to empty nesters, early retirees. And I would sit there in the weekend in the model home. They'd come hmm. in, they loved the place. But when we got started talking about, okay, where are you now? How can we help you make this transition? Their eyes would glaze over. They would go, oh my God, we're overwhelmed. We don't know where to start. We could never do that. We've got, you know, three stories of this and that, and we, just too much stuff. Mm -hmm. And they never would do anything. They were stuck mm -hmm. with their stuff. Mm -hmm. Very frustrating. Kept thinking there's some, got to be some hands-on tools somewhere that can help these people move forward. And at the time, I could not find anything. Hmm. So uh, shortly after that, my mother, who lived in Northern Iowa and very healthy Nordic woman, was not did not have any medications, nothing. All of a sudden, couldn't finish her sentences. Hmm. And when I went up to see her, and I brought her back down to our town uh, for uh, testing, and found out she had terminal brain cancer. Oh goodness! Yeah, it was tough. So we moved her in with us, and uh, she stayed with us and took care of her till she passed. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go back up north to liquidate her estate and it was overwhelming. I knew yeah. exactly hands on. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you've got all that emotion in it too, and you're like, well, what would she want me to keep? Or what do I want to keep? I don't know how to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. And it was a very grueling process. After that was done, I just thought there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find it. So I just decided to create it. I have lots of organizational skills. So I wrote a workbook that gave a step-by-step -step system of how to do this, including the psychological part. You know, why are you hanging on to all this stuff? Where do you hang on hangups? And how can you let go? And so then I just I thought that, wow, this could be used for anybody in the country, <laughs> but I'm just a little realtor <laughs> in Missouri, so I don't know how to do this. So I just started using it with my own clients and uh, developed a specialty working with seniors and mature uh, people and started developing networks and created a successful business. Then I moved to Austin, Texas in 2012 and kept thinking, gee, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. Finally left real estate in the height of <laughs> my financial success mm -hmm. and redesigned the packaging, redesigned this whole company and started just doing uh, the downsizing and move management 
and uh, here I am today. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I love the uh, the phrase "hang on hang ups" because mm-hmm. um, a lot of us. I, I was just thinking about my closet. I have a crap ton of just like stuff I haven't worn in like three, four years, but still there. And it made the move with me when I moved in. It does not fit me anymore, but I'm hanging on to it. Uh, <laughs> Cause maybe I'll get back in shape to fit in it. Nah, but <laughs> you know, you know the, the, there's a the thing like, why do we have the hang on hang ups? What, what is psychologically, what are some of the things that you found that, so an agent who's listening to, to this, you know, can say, Oh my gosh, I have a client and I totally identify with this, mm-hmm. you know, so they can go help them right now. What, what's something that jumps out at you, Kim? Well, I've discovered between seven and nine of the most common things that people use as excuses. And when I do my downsizing seminars, I highlight these, you know, um, I might use it someday. Like you said, if you can fit into it, I'm sure I'm going to lose that weight. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) Guys do this a lot. They'll have, they'll say, you know, oh, okay, this fan is broken or uh, this little (laughs) other little doodad is broken. Uh, Stick it out in the garage. And if I fix it, it's going to be really useful. Right. They never do. Yeah. Uh, You know, people say (laughs) somebody special gave it to me. So it has a sentimental value. Um, just a ton of different reasons. I'm trying to think, I don't have it in front of me, but um, there are just lots of reasons. Most of them are not totally rational. It might be worth something. Mm -hmm. And as we discovered, just especially in the last five years, that those antiques and those collectibles that we all thought were going to be so priceless, you know, remember the beanie bag? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Or I mean, the beanie bears? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally worthless now. Um, <laughs> Even the collector's so, edition, though? Even the special yeah, limited know, edition, right? Matt, I told you we shouldn't have invested in that. All of our money all, down the drain. All of our money. Oh man. <laughs> so, how many hummels do you have in your closet? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So that's that's the big thing is convincing people that. Not yeah. only does, is your stuff not worth anything, but your kids don't want it either. So, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yeah, that 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 is a tough one. <laughs> there's there's definitely a lot of uh, like I'm watching my parents. They're not exactly downsizing, but I'm watching them go through that because they they sold their house and and bought another one that needs a lot of work, and so they can't they can't fill it up with. They can't just take all their stuff from their current house and put it into the new house because they're living in it while they remodel it. So it's a downsizing exactly. situation, even though it's not technically a smaller home. So there are, there's definitely other situations that apply where it's not, it's not a retiree or empty nester going from, oh, you know, like my high school kid is leaving and now I'm going to buy a condo. Like there's a lot of situations that probably fall into that, the heading of downsizing that, that don't, that aren't like the traditional what we think. I have a friend because I mean, we're in a college town, right? I have a friend who said, you need to st- have a kit called downsize my dorm because kids, <laughs> kids bring way too much stuff when they're moving to college and uh, it just it gets really cluttered. But uh, it's, it's not the arena that I, I focus yeah. on. Uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. So um, suddenly single people who are going through a divorce, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right, so and that and that does fall into your specialty, right? Like in terms of how you used Absolutely. to market yourself as a downsizing specialist, it wasn't just for the mature market. You also mar- marketed yourself to the suddenly single. Uh, yes, and in my course, I talk about the six subsets of mm-hmm. downsizers, and then how you can choose the sub niche within that niche that mm-hmm. fits best for you and your market. Nice. God, that's smart. Okay. So let, let's dig into your background a little bit because you've got some really interesting things. You mentioned that you had some, some organizational skills. So when you spotted this gap in the market, you, know you, you knew you had the organizational skills to create something, which you did. But then you also had some other skills, marketing, advertising, creative skills from, from your other background. So walk us through just real quickly, hit the highlight points of some of the other things that you've done, that, you know, some of the other skills and some of the other backgrounds that kind of went into what you do now. Uh, I think I've been a, what do they call it? Um, I can't remember the word, but I have been an entrepreneur most of my adult adult life. My dad was an entrepreneur, so it's in my blood. Uh, So I've done a lot of uh, creative work. I used to have a creative agency where we did a lot of uh, publication design, video production, um, Mm. and that was back in the day. I will not say when that was. (laughs) They no longer use that format anymore. It was when video was was tougher to produce, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. My claim to fame is that we did a a commercial for a leather cleaner that Willie Smith endorsed. So we got to work with Willie Smith. Um, and if you know who, who he is, he was a, a very famous 
cardinal um, professional ball player. Oh, Saint, when, so Car- what, St. Louis Cardinals? Yes, baseball? St. Louis Cardinals. And his claim to fame was when, when they did a home run, he could do a backflip on the field. Oh, nice. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Um, but I've, I've, so I've got that background. And mm. then my husband and I built um, a uh, business tutoring kids and we had several centers in several different towns and um, I did a lot of the uh, marketing and operations and training for that so that's where I got a lot of my coaching skills Mm -hmm. Uh, and then moved here to Austin and and, and went into real estate and moved into here to Austin and have launched we we were we launched a real estate business from scratch here in Austin Mm -hmm. Uh, I I do not recommend that (laughs) 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 Doing that twice, once is hard enough, but twice, wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is an oversaturated market, which is yeah, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about niching yeah. because you're not like everybody else. You've got to do something to stand out. So uh, I did. Yeah, that's, and, and yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really think about it. I didn't know this about you before we were introduced, but that is an incredible, well, number one, it's an incredible accomplishment, but it's a testament to the power of niching down to be able to go in and build a new business from scratch in an area that's super, super saturated. I mean, it's the headquarters of KW. I mean, you throw a rock in any direction in a mall and you're going to hit a KW agent in the head. You got um, it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, so let, let's get into the downsizing part of it a little bit more. Um, and the, the, the identification of the niche, we talked a little bit before we hit record that there was a couple of fears, pretty common that everybody has when they kind of they scope out a specialty and they say, you know, I, th- I think this could work, but I'm not sure. And to me, it's, I'm not sure if this is a big enough niche. Is there enough people in here that I have enough business, right? And then what do I do with the people that, you know, I, I would like to work with everybody? You know, if I, if I declare that I'm a specialist in downsizing, does that mean that nobody else will ever reach out to me and I'll lose all that business? So what, when you start, you know, kind of working with someone, how do you help them work through those things? How did you work through those things? Yeah. Well, I looked at the statistics nationally first and then in my local market. Nationally, 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day. It is a huge tsunami. And together, and this is my generation, the boomers, together, they've got two and a half trillion dollars to invest in real estate. It is the most well-financed niche in the entire world, but definitely in the U.S. So you got to follow that. You got to follow the number, the numbers, and you've got to follow the money, and it's there. And third, it spans two generations. It's not just the boomers, but it's also their parents. So when you're you were um, looking at who you want to serve, you're talking to both sides, but you're definitely talking to that boomer, that adult child, because they're the ones that are desperate right now, and that is your low hanging fruit, if you will. Uh, Hmm. The people who are like, oh my gosh, you know, mom just had a fall. She's in rehab. I can't bring her back into the home. I'm in uh, New Hampshire and my mom is in Austin and I need help. Or they have to take off work for weeks and weeks. I'm working with a gal from Anchorage, Alaska, and she had to come down, take a leave of absence from work, come down, stay for weeks and weeks, helping her parents then they, we moved them into uh, assisted living mm-hmm. and she went back to Alaska. Now she's back down again because her mother had a relapse and they're mm-hmm. working on getting the home ready to sell. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a huge issue. Yeah. So I see you're looking at the stats, you're looking at the trends. I mean, these are huge trends, like huge, you know, uh, demographic trends. And then you said you also looked at like the local stats. How did you check out the local stats? What were you, what were some of the indicators you were looking for? I want to look and see what percentage of the market is the mature market is a 50 plus market or really a 45 plus market. Now we're starting to talk to Gen Xers uh, because they're turning 50. Uh, But also how is, is that market increasing or decreasing in Austin? We are the fastest growing uh, 55 to 65 year old market in the country. And we're almost becoming the fast, the, the largest or the fastest growing 65 plus market. So people are moving here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, or you just look at the numbers, you know, how many people, and usually you can get these stats from either your county 
tax site or you can get them through your title company that say how many people who uh, are registered as seniors or who uh, you know have Medicare or those kinds of types of things mm -hmm. uh, how many of them are in a particular neighborhood or a particular town I'm working with a gal from Monterey California and uh, she was able to get that information from her title company mm. so you want to look and just see are the numbers there for you to and and then our uh, are is the senior housing industry building in your area? Mm, that's and, a good one. Uh, yeah, because the they're looking Austin. at the same things and they've got a lot of money on the line. So they're looking at that same data very, very carefully. The senior housing industry is exploding. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unreal. I, uh, I subscribe to some RSS feeds and, and some newsletters and I get a weekly update and I can't keep track. I can't <laughs> keep track of it locally because there are so many uh, 55 plus active adult um, senior, you know, Sun City is right north of me. It's huge. It's a city, uh, you know, 55 plus people and uh, it's growing all the time. So it's well, there you go. Greg, it's everywhere. We, found, we found your new home. If you ever want to move closer to your brother, I got, I got the place for you. You, you heard her, Gen X. I can help you. I can help That's right. Oh, my God. I actually live in where there's a large uh, retirement community here called Rossmore. Uh, it's two golf courses, thousands of units, right? Mm -hmm. It's like going into like, you know, a lockdown facility to get into that place. <laughs> uh, but it, I live in a 800, almost 900 condo development. And the people call this Rossmore too, because there's, there's a lot of older folks that live in here. I would ravish the opportunity to live in a quiet place. So Matt, I'm not going to take that as an insult. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm already 70 years old on the inside anyway. Yes, so <laughs> boom, I'm there. I'm there. And a, and um, a curmudgeon. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is something that's interesting, though, and I think that, Kim, I'd love to get your opinion on this. So someone like me who I'm 40 or Matt's a little bit younger than me, 35 or 25 or whatever you are, um, that the skin cream does wonders for you, Johnson. But the uh, could a young agent be a specialist in, in downsizing or, or is it an, a more established agent uh, or just an older agent? Are they going to resonate more with the, with the boomers? How, how, what have you seen there? It's really about knowledge and it's about building your story. You can have a unique story, unique personal or professional experience working with your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had people in my beta course uh, just recently that were younger, but they had an experience with their grandparents that was so difficult or emotional, or they think, oh my gosh, I wish I had known about a service like yours before. I hear this all the time. So it's, it's about the passion that you have based on your personal and professional encounters that feeds your desire to want to be in this business. This isn't for everybody. It, it's not for people who are transactional agents. Mm -hmm. it, it really is for people who want to serve and build that relationship. And it is sometimes a more difficult transaction than a simple first time or move up buyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it goes back again, as always, to this a relationship business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're working with first time, you know, buyers or, you know, last time sellers before they make right. that, that move to a retirement community or, or whatever else on the downsizing. It's interesting that, that, that premise kept coming up on every single, um, pretty much every conversation we have about how do I get more business? Go yeah. build a relationship, dumbass. Go, go, don't just say, oh my God, look, I got a Facebook message or I have a Facebook ad. Yeah, that's cute. But getting out there and going hand to hand, belly to belly, eyeball to eyeball, you know, pressing the flesh, meeting the people, bringing value is the most important thing. Like I network and I have with the Rockstar Connect, they do a, throw a networking event for me, right? Every month. I met this company, this, this couple here, along with their business partner, when they came in, I was just bringing value, building a relationship with them. I had no idea that they were going to buy a house. They're like, yeah. well, Greg, we would much rather buy a house from you since you, since you brought value to us. I talked to them for maybe 40 minutes. It doesn't take a long time to build this. But balance. you didn't try to sell them, did you? Not a single iota. That's right. Yeah. It was purely bringing value to them. Mm -hmm. And you can do that on multiple different levels. Um, do you find that um, doing social media, Kim, in this arena is helpful? Or is it better to go out there and actually get belly to belly with folks? Oh, I think you have to do all of it. But I am encouraging my uh, coaching clients, my realtors, especially my beta team, I made them do a video 
uh, because video is so powerful now and I'm starting to do more of it. And it's, you know, it, today I did a video and promoted this show and it was excruciating when I looked at it. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I do not look good. <laughs> but I put it out there. I mean, it's right. up on LinkedIn, it's on Instagram, it's on my Facebook page, all my Facebook pages mm -hmm. because it's the message that's really important. And when I start feeling passionate about something and I get an idea in my head, sometimes I'll pull the car over, whip my phone out and just start talking into it. That's it's awesome. so important to, to capture that. Uh, so yes, yeah. social media is important, but not the kind, not the, the ads, the Facebook ads and, and the slick things. It's, it's the, the things that you got inspired with. Uh, the stories of working with your clients, no matter what their age, um, and and those testimonials. I just finished a testimonial with a 78-year-old, and she was going on and on talking about downsize my home was dynamite, and they made me feel, and I got to sleep in my own bed the very first night, and oh my gosh, they unpacked everything. And you can't buy that. And I love her. I have adopted her. She's adopted me. I mean, we're we're going out to dinner together. She's just mm -hmm. awesome. So that's so, what it's all about. That is so awesome. And I, I love the fact that, you know, when you talk, I mean, you, you got passion for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't like, uh, I got to show up from nine to five. I hate my boss. I, <laughs> there's my red stapler and you know, that's the call it a day. You're like, no man, I'm going to go out there and turn the world on fire and I'm going to bring value and show people how to help other folks and really do this. So I love the passion. Absolutely love it. Can I say, can I make a comment about something you said a little bit earlier? Mm-hmm. Sure. When you're talking about, you know, going out and, and flesh to flesh and, and face to face, one of the things I think that stops realtors from doing that, and one of the things that I hesitated about way back when, where do you start? Right. You know, where do you start? For, what, what if I put all my energy over here and, and it doesn't turn out, you know, and, and I, I don't get any results? And I just want to encourage people who are listening to your show to switch that mindset from what if I don't get anything out of it to what if they don't get anything out of it? Ooh. Have I given it? And, and to just go, you know, no matter who you choose, this is why niching is so great because you can do it faster. But if you choose first time buyers or pe people who are renting and, and, and they want to own, mm -hmm. um, then go out and say, what can I do to build the most value with that particular arena? What information do I have that I can share and how can I, I help and share it enough that I can help them move forward? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And others first. Love it. Yeah. I think that's, that's one of the things that I, I, I don't like, and I notice it a lot and, and not just in real estate. This is definitely not, not anything unique to our industry, but in every industry, there's a whole lot of navel gazing, a whole lot of kind of thinking about what we want. How do we get more clients? How do we get more leads? How do we convert leads? All this stuff. And yeah, there's not a lot, not a lot of putting ourselves in the shoes of the, of the prospect and thinking about how they'd like to be sold to, what, what's their decision-making process like, like what information are they looking for? If they were going to make that decision, what kind of person is going to resonate with them? What are they looking for out of us as the expert? Um, and it, it, if we do that, it will have a lot of positive effects. I think niching down is one of them, one of many positive effects of putting right. others, people, you know, others first and thinking about what they want. Because I think it affects our the level of our communication. I think it affects the level of the service that we provide. You know, all of those things can come from asking just that that key question, which is, you know, what do they want to get out of it? What are they looking for? So flipping that script and focusing on them. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the fear of not attracting enough of the right. We talked about, you know, kind of the big trends and understanding that there, there's a lot of business out there in this space. So that's, that's awesome. What, what about the other fear, which is that, well, if I tell somebody, like if I'm doing a networking event or if I'm out and about at a coffee shop and somebody asks me what I do, should I tell them I'm a downsizing specialist? Because what if they don't need that right now? What if they just are a standard move up buyer or, you know, they're getting out of their apartment, they're looking to go buy a house and I could help them, but I can't help them if I tell them I'm a downsizing specialist. So how would you answer that? Yeah. And that is a great question. Uh, and it is, it's, and, and I, I don't want to shame any realtor for feeling that. Mm-hmm.
by that. You guys are jazzed by it, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's, I mean, mine is, is downsizing in the mature market. It could be, uh, you know, move up buyers if you're passionate about it. But if you're communicating your niche with passion, they're like, wow, that is really cool. Well, you know what? I, I don't have any downsides, but, but I've got this. My friend has uh, a son who's graduated from law school and he's been thinking about moving from his condo rental in and buying a home somewhere do you know anything about that and that's usually how that conversation goes yeah. not always but quite often the other thing i want to point out is again because the downsizing arena is a two generation niche i don't even want to call it a niche yeah. because it's so huge <laughs> but guess what boomers have kids and mm -hmm. if you're serving them well, who are they going to recommend? Yeah, and it's and it's. The, I think the best way I've heard it described. And I don't remember who said it this way. It could be. It could go back all the way a hundred years to like scientific advertising by Claude Hopkins or something. Um, the target is not the market, right? So who you aim your message at aren't the only people who respond or reach out. Mm -hmm. Or and of course, then you've got the personal networking stuff on top of it. So if you're just out out and about, just making connections and introducing people to each other, building relationships and stuff like that. Yeah, you do get into those conversations about what you do. And when you tell people, oh, well, I'm a, I, I specialize in helping people downsize, that first of all, that grabs attention because nobody else says that. Every real estate agent says, I help people buy, sell, and invest anything from residents, from tiny houses all the way up to uh, apartment buildings, and I do some commercial real estate on the side. That's huh. the standard answer, right? <laughs> exactly. And if you'd like to invest in commercial, I'm your guy. Like, really? Yeah. Um, so that's the standard answer. So when we give them something more specific, they're going to be surprised and intrigued already anyway. That's a good thing. The, here's, what, here's what I find happens because I'm, I'm extremely specialist in my agency, which is that I get people reaching out going, hey, I know you don't usually do this, but I was yes. hoping that, right, because you demonstrate competence, expertise, insight, creativity, and you have a super specialized business that people instantly understand, they may, like, they almost apologize for not being the exact right client, but I'd really love to work with you. Could you please make an exception for me? Or can you make an exception for so and so? That's a that is a completely different and way more powerful position to be put in. I'm sure you've you've had that happening many times. Yes, and then they see you as an expert in one area, and sometimes they'll just make an assumption that you're an expert in another area, or yeah. you know an expert. It's no different than if you are in if I'm in the Austin market and I know somebody that in um, Greg in your market mm -hmm. that needs to buy a home. I'm not going to try to help them. I'm going to refer them to a specialist in that area, i.e. you. Uh, and so developing those referral relationships to people who specialize in other niches is, is an awesome way. And of course, we yeah. can always ask for a referral fee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is, so it's great. Like if you have, like if you decide to specialize in something like this and you know that you're not going to help people who are renting their apartments right now go buy a condo or, or a starter home, then you build a relationship with an agent in your area who does that so that you can hand off those clients to them, take your referral fee, go your merry way. Right. And I wouldn't say you can't serve them. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I tell my agents is don't refuse business that you really feel competent to help these people in right. take it but um be known for something mm -hmm. and yeah, i think it. that's what's important yeah yeah i think that's one of the toughest decisions that agents have to make and we all have to make it but in other industries it's a little bit more clear and it's forced upon them uh agents we we've all, the industry has allowed us to get away for a long time without being known for anything and, uh, and, and the ones that decide to be known for something end up standing out and, and it just makes everything so much easier. You know, when you have similar clients, you can develop better systems. They're tailored for that type of person. It makes everything else on the back end a little bit easier and more streamlined because you're doing some of the same things over and over again. You're having a lot of the same conversations over and over again. Uh, like you mentioned, you developed your workbook. Um, which works great for your coaching clients now, but at one point that workbook just helped you, right? I mean, then there's, Absolutely. there's all kinds, I have the same thing in my business where, uh, I developed systems for myself first because they made me more efficient. They made my life easier. They made, they made next week and next month easier on me before I ever hired anybody else to do some of those things. And if we have clients who are constantly scattered and everybody has different problems, different challenges, it really makes it difficult to develop any sort of 
systems, procedures, whatever in our business that makes tomorrow any easier than today was. And that's, that's what I'm about. I love building things that make tomorrow easier. Oh, I love that. That's a great, great thing. Making tomorrow easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so things yeah. like workbooks and, and things like that, the more we specialize, and of course you've got this all already made. We'll get to that in a second, but yeah, to me, I mean that niching down, so choosing what niche you're going to go after and then deciding to specialize that really committing to it. It has all sorts of other really, really amazing beneficial effects that most agents will never know about because they never make that decision. Yep. Real estate's hard. You know, mm -hmm. people that are standing on the outside looking in go, oh, that looks like so much fun. Or I love huh. looking at houses online. I love, mm -hmm. show, you know, going and looking, going to open houses. Great. Keep on doing that. Yes. <laughs> Don't <laughs> <in> real estate. <laughs> exactly. They should do because just that. It's, it's, Keep it's on hard. watching HGTV. So, so because it's hard, you want to be working with people and working in, in an arena that you get great personal satisfaction out of and that's so and true maybe it's not helping seniors or their or their adult children move these people forward maybe it's something else but whatever it is it it needs to light you up otherwise why spend all the hours and all the headaches that a real estate agent has to go through yeah yeah i mean greg i give you a hard time because you like working with buyers and I, that wasn't my game um but that's the bottom line that's exactly why you do it that's mm -hmm. where the satisfaction comes from mm -hmm. And it's, you know, frankly, it's a lot easier to get along with buyers because they're, they're excited to go do this. Sellers are going through some sort of life change and sometimes it's not the prettiest thing. And sometimes they just don't want to, they don't want to hear it. Like I have a seller right now, um, big, beautiful two plus million dollar house. They're downsizing because they have to uh, fi financially. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Seller is not pumped on having to leave her kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right. No. So the negative energy there is really kind of a pain in the butt. But the positive side, like when we go looking at houses, people, they're all excited and like their tails are all fluffy and they're excited to prance through the house. But you know what? I, I think it's, uh, it's my niche. That's where I like to, to work is on the, on the buy side. Yeah. Um, and whereas I, if I got back into real estate as an active agent, the first thing I would do is take Kim's course. And now I would put up a billboard in San Diego specializing in the suddenly single. Oh. Oh. So, it's, oh, so it's a dating site too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I only specialize in newly single in La Jolla. All, All right. right. So <laughs> the, the funny thing is about that. Back when I was single, like I'm not kidding around. Like the singles, the, the singles. I have. I got two clients out of out of a dating site. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to work that way. It's not, <laughs> but it was a beautiful byproduct. He's good. That, that could be your next young, interview is, is how to get, how to build your business <laughs> advertising <laughs> dating on life. dating sites. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That Actually, that was hilarious. a theory of mine. That, that was no oh, joke. I wrote up a whole <laughs> business plan on that. Because if, if they trust you, like if they trust the website, right, from to find a, their life partner or whatever they're looking for, why wouldn't they trust with, with an advice for real estate, right? I mean, you get married, you have kids, you grow, you sell one house, you combine houses, you, you know, why not? Yeah, I'm no. going to let you test that theory, Greg. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the beta program and just uh, what's the next steps for people if they want to kind of stay in touch with you, if they want to learn more about the coaching, because this sounds like an amazing opportunity. It's nothing like anything else with anybody else that I've ever, ever encountered or interviewed on the show. So I would love to push people your way. How do they do that? That's great. I, I do feel like I am blazing a trail. Mm -hmm. I think that the real estate industry in general needs to be at the heart of solving the senior housing industry crisis. And it is a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they're not right now. The real yeah. estate industry is not at the heart of it and it needs to be. So I'm, I'm kind of on a, on a big mission, but also on a one-on-one -on -one mission to help real estate agents enhance and build a satisfying career. So I uh, just finished a six week beta course. And by that, I mean, I, I got a select group of agents from around the country to test this out with. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did, uh, and I, I think I, I sent you an outline of, mm -hmm. of the course, uh, you know, being unique and being known for something is really important. So how do you craft your story, your unique story? So you stand out from everybody. We start with that and then looking at those six different types of downsizers, which ones fit with your story, which ones fit with your market, how to do that, and then how to understand all the newest trends in the senior housing industry, and how do you connect and get past the gate so that you get referrals, you build those referral relationships with 
the senior industry mm. uh, sales directors. Mm -hmm. And most of them, believe it or not, Greg, are young. You were really? asking about that. Yeah. Mm. They're 20 something, 30 something. Wow. Yep. Uh, so they're, you know, people who are seniors have no problem talking to kids that are the age of their grandkids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I um, <laughs> was going to say, well, maybe me and Greg are more prejudiced against them than they are. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, they don't know anything. That's right. But uh, kids so, these days. Oh. And, then we, and then we talk about what are the special needs of both the adult child and the senior that's moving and everybody in between or the suddenly single. What mm. is the total pack? Well, how do we need to communicate with them and build trust? What are the special resources they need? Mm -hmm. For a senior, it's not just having your toolkit of, I've got my plumber, I've got my painter, I've got my handyman that can come and home prep your house or you know, blah, blah, whatever, my roofer. Mm -hmm. You have to have a, a Medicare specialist, you need to have Mm -hmm. have an estate attorney, you need to have a home uh, health agency, you need to have all these different uh, resources that you can be the source of the source on, just yeah. like you are in regular real estate. But it's a very much more expanded uh, group. And the good thing about that is it's a referral source. I was gonna, just going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely they are. That's a great strategy just on its own. But yeah, especially when so you're helping, helping, you yeah, helping the people in my course understand all these different uh, senior industry partners and how do you develop those relationships. Um, then the final piece is your marketing plan. And I help people actually create, and, and this is a very, business building course. I did not want another certification course where, you know, you, there's, there's a couple of senior certification courses out there. Uh, I want this to be hands-on accountability based where, you know, they're having to go out every week, do something, come back, report it, and mm -hmm. then work on it. And then we do, we do a one-on-one -on -one session where we're building your specific marketing plan. Um, I have a, a video experts, online video experts that come in and talk, social media experts that come in and talk about how do you use this niche, your specific story and your specific niche to brand yourself more quickly. Yeah. And, and, then, and then afterwards, we'll have a, a, an ongoing mastermind group that will continue to help people mm. and we'll learn from each other. Perfect. Love it. And what's the best way to, to keep in touch, get connected with you and, and see when the next group is launched? Uh, I will, I will be launching right after Labor Day. And uh, I have a Facebook page called Downsizing Specialists in Real Estate. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's lots of information there. And I will be continuing to post. Uh, if you want to get on my mailing list, I will have some uh, special pricing for people who uh, are interested in this up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. uh, up to a certain deadline. Ten, yeah, point uh, in time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But this is going to be a, a real um, business shifting experience for people. So, yeah. people who are interested in this particular niche or just want to learn more about it uh, can continue to go on my Facebook page, give me their information, or um, you know, we can we can find a time to do a, a Zoom or a one on one. Very cool. Love it. That's awesome. And you're right. You're absolutely blazing a trail. And uh, like I said, I don't know anybody that's doing anything similar. So if anybody is interested in this market, I think, like I said, it's, it really can be, you know, if no matter what age group you're in, if you have some sort of personal experience or professional experience that is kind of leading you in this direction, to me, it's worth checking out and investigating whether this is a niche to specialize in because it's going to be, it, I mean, it's on the cutting edge of, of a huge, huge demographic trend. So I love that. Um, yeah, everybody should go check it out. So it's Downsizing Specialist in Real Estate is the name of the Facebook page, right? So if they just pop that yes. in, search for it, come up, like the page, check out the post, you're going to stay in communication on that page and let them know kind of how to get into your email list. Uh, and I know you guys, you've got some other fun things coming as you continue to kind of build this coaching system out. So there's some yeah, I've got my third about. edition of my workbook coming out. And, and Greg, after the show, if you'll uh, give me your address, I'm going to mail you a copy that you can share with your clients because it might help them. Oh, that'd be awesome. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually trying to go to uh, my, uh, like the brain of a goldfish. Well, where's the Facebook group called again? Uh, think DSRE, DSRE, Downsizing Specialists in Real Estate. Downsizing Specialists in Real Estate. Okay. 
get connected All right. up. All right. And then Greg, what's the best way to reach out and connect with you? Um, I want you guys to go to bookmcdaniel.com. Uh, go there and book a 30 minute call with me in regards to what EXP is doing, how we're exploding. We just crested as it's recording 20,000 agents. Our founder, Glenn Stanford thinks that he, we can four to five exit, go to a hundred thousand by 2025. So if you guys have been hearing about it, let's talk about it and see what it does, how it provides passive income for both me and Matt and my team and how we can help you guys make more money doing the same darn thing. So bookmcdaniel.com uh, is where you'll spend 30 minutes, glorious minutes, I might say, with yours truly. Uh, and then Matt, how do people get booked on podcasts and how do they review this podcast? Uh, yeah, so easy place to review the podcast is on Apple Podcasts, right from your phone. Give us a five-star rating. If you enjoyed Kim's episode, give Kim a shout out in the review. Thank her for her time and her contribution. Uh, as far as getting featured, so if you're, let's say you're in Kim's position and you are an expert and you sell kind of a B2B service or a course and you want to get booked on podcasts like this to share your story just like Kim did uh, and be able to reach ideal clients or people that can buy your course, people that you want to serve an impact and have an impact on their life. Uh, and you wouldn't get on more podcasts to do it. Just go to pursuingresults.com slash training. So that's where I've got a whole training I did with a client of mine who's been on Entrepreneur on Fire, Social Media Examiner, a whole bunch of others. I've been on a whole bunch of podcasts and we basically break down, you know, Kim, you mentioned like you're kind of crafting your story. We talk about exactly that. It's the same thing, right? It's you have to craft a story and and give somebody a story hook, a reason for them to book you as a guest on the show. So we break down exactly how to do that, as well as how to find the right podcast for you that are going to put you in front of the right audience, how to draw them in, how to make friends with the podcast hosts. So you build this amazing network of business referrers, you know, and strategic partners, and maybe even mentors. Uh, I met my own business coach uh, by booking him on a podcast. So podcasting has been the ultimate networking experience for me. So if you want it for that and to attract clients, go to pursuingresults.com slash training. So cool. with that being said, Gregory Thomas. Uh, yes, Matthew Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> shall, we, uh, <laughs> shall we tie a little bow around this episode? With our full Christian names attached. Yes. What color should we... Uh, <laughs> Christian names. <laughs> what, what, what color do you want to pick for this? <laughs> um, I was thinking about Hank lately. Um, so let's put a nice uh, bright orange bow. He's, he's uh, in honor of Hank, our mutual friend, uh, who's been doing a, a bunch of posting online about his bright orange Jeep and all kinds oh. of I actually saw a picture of, of Hank this weekend on Facebook and he was jump, doing a, a cliff jump in uh, orange swimsuit and his orange hat into the water. I'm like, and you're pulling this whole orange thing to a whole new That's going to say. He's taking it. Yeah, he's, he's taking it further. I don't know. That's, that's a little extreme. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're going to do an orange bow on the show. Kim, thank you for coming on. This is such a – the reason why I was quiet is because I was just thinking about how many – just how many opportunities there are that people just miss on a consistent basis because they don't niche. And they just kind of – Yeah, didn't you everywhere. ignore your dad's advice to niche down 100%. when you first came into the business? What, was it, what did he tell you to do? He, he told me to go out and become the condo king. That's like, what it was. Oh, I like it. Yeah, isn't that good? Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I, I just ignored him for 20 years. <laughs> 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 well, the good news is now you're, now you're old enough to help older, older people move and downsize. Congratulations. Oh, Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you, ignored, you ignored the advice for 20 years, so now it comes back full circle. Yeah, but I mean, it's, there's so many niches out there. You don't need to be a real estate hoe and go everywhere for a deal. Mm -hmm. Stay in your lane, stay in your geographical area, stay with what you're good at, and you can make millions of dollars in this industry because you will, like Kim, like you said, you'll be known for something, which is something that like Matt said, you, there's, we are so inbred as real estate agents because we do the same shit every single, uh, every other person is doing and we do not stand out. So that's why I love that. I actually, I want to say, what do you do for a living? I help people downsize. Mm. Ooh. So great. So Kim, you're a legend. Thank you for coming on to the show. Guys, if this is something you can share, go share it with other people to help everybody start downsizing. All right, guys, till next time. Peace out, ninjas. We're gone.